Good evening and good morning to uh, everyone who are watching this uh, program. Uh, let me begin by paying homage to the Triple Gym, the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha with my high respect. And, and before I begin, I also would like to pay my respect to the president of the CBMS, uh, Venerable Timini Mung Sang, and as well as to all Venerable Monks who are appearing on the screen at and then also uh, venerable monks uh, from across the world. Uh, I would like to pay my respect as well. And also I would like to greet all uh, the viewers and the people across the globe who are watching our programs here. And uh, let me uh, begin by sharing that this program is about the Cambodian New Year. And we are broadcasting this program in order to share our knowledge as well as the, the event of this uh, auspicious occasion. Um, and here we have two speakers uh, to uh, elaborate, uh, to help us uh, describe and explain the meaning of this event. Uh, I would like to... Uh, address uh, to uh, the first one is Venerable Dr. Uh, Yuan Seng Yit uh, from Cambodia. I'm uh, particularly, I would like to apologize for, <laughs> for waking you up <laughs> too early in the morning uh, because of the confused of the time zone. Uh, and also the second person is, uh, I don't know, how would you like me to address you? You know, in Cambodian, we, it, we address you as Pertecha and can, can I say it as, uh, uh, elderly pundit, uh, uh, yes, elderly. yeah, this is elderly. Oh, thank you for so much. And uh, his name is uh, uh, Mr. Wu Peng San. Yes. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so he is going to uh, uh, share with us the tradition aspect. So I would like to inform. Uh, everybody that we are going to discuss two aspects on this uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, one is uh, a Buddhist uh, aspect, which is uh, going to share with the Buddhist perspective on this uh, certain uh, uh, auspicious occasions. And also I would like Mr. Wu Peng San to share with us the traditional aspects about the Cambodian New Year. So the younger, gener uh, younger generation would uh, would learn uh, something about these uh, traditions, and uh, so I would like to begin by uh, with Venerable Dr. Yan Sing Yit uh, about uh, the Buddhist uh, Buddhist aspect or uh, Buddhist perspective on the Cambodian New Year. Uh, but uh, before I begin asking you uh, what kind of teachings can be applied during these uh, occasions, I would like you to tell us the history. Uh, or the story behind the uh, this uh, auspicious occasion. Uh, could you please share with us, uh, you know, beginning by because of course this event started with the story, uh, and 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 mostly a younger generation didn't understand or didn't know what is the history or what is the story behind this uh, auspicious occasion. So could you please help us to uh, uh, to understand uh, the story behind this event a little bit? So could you please? Thank you. My deep respect to the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha, and to all the venerable monks who are present on this uh, virtual platform, and my greeting to Mr. Open Sang, who shared this platform with me, especially to the venerable moderator. Actually, uh, the <clears throat> each and every culture, tradition, and civilized, civilization uh, all the way uh, started with the story. To begin with, we cannot uh, have something without the beginning. So the story of Khmer New Year is exactly have the story of the, the interaction between uh, Kamabal Kumar, a boy, and the, uh, the Gabal Mahapram. Gabal Mahapram is uh, recognize as someone from the heaven. So this story signify uh, a very great 
interaction between a human being and the uh, divinely being. Uh, uh, I think most of Cambodian people are aware of this story very well, especially the, the, the old generation. And because each and every year when the, the day that the Khmer year fall on, so the, the, the story of Kabal Mahapurum and Hamabala always on the news and everybody reading. But so from uh, Cambodian New Year started with, uh, from this story, uh, telling about the asking uh, Maha, Maha, uh, Kabal Mahapurum, you know, ask Kamabala uh, about the, uh, the three kinds of uh, three kinds of blessings. Uh, and then it takes about one week to solve this problem. And one, one of the, the most important point uh, for me, I see why these the human beings and divinely beings put their life on just simple ask question. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, this day there are a lot of uh, questions about that. But please be in mind that when we are talking about tradition, about the culture, about the civilization, it always represents with the picture, basically, but there is always a meaning behind that. So some questions should not be asked. If we look at each and every tradition in the world, definitely it does has a lot of similarities. Uh, to begin with, for example, like uh, in Sri Lanka, the, the beginning of the Sinhalese start with the light, with the lion, with the animal. <laughs> and uh, for example, in our uh, civilization, our race also started with the the the, the, the presence of the dragon, the, the naga, <laughs> kind of that. So this is a very simple and. Uh, uh, for the beginning of the civilization. And in short, uh, I would like to say that the, from the uh, very first beginning, we had a new year on uh, Mikase, the, the, the lunar calendar of Cambodian month, uh, Mikase. And later on, we, we changed it to uh, to it mean I think it, uh, it falls on the April. And from now we had the new year on April. So this is the beginning of the, 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 the our new year. And for, for the Cambodian contact, uh, tradition, civilization mostly is the combination uh, between uh, Brahmanism, uh, Cambodian cultures, uh, and the Buddhist uh, Buddhist culture, Buddhism. So it makes it's 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 a sort of uh, it's the mixture between Buddhism, Cambodian culture, and Hinduism. Because even though Buddhism and Hinduism were not the first religions for Cambodian people, a Cambodian does have uh, their own cultures, their own way of life. So when these two religions arrive in the land, then it, it's uh, um, integrated themselves into the local culture. So even though for this Khmer New Year, so we still see the combination of the three elements. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let me begin asking uh, Mr. Upen San as well. You know, uh, this, this especially in the in the US you know the younger generation have a lot of questions about this and and you know uh, why do we celebrate this Cambodian New Year why our Cambodian New Year uh, is different from uh, the American New Year and you know for for the traditional stand, uh, uh, point of view uh, what can you tell us you know as a younger generation what can you tell us about the the, the, the Cambodian New Year uh, in, 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 in brief to understand why uh, the Cambodian people, the Cambodian elders celebrating this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, auspicious occasion. So uh, could you please uh, share with us? So 
the younger the younger generation could understand uh, in case they happen to watch it. So thank you, Mr. Ubing San. Actually, young people and old people as well, <coughs> young and old alike, they have the same idea of inspiring from the legendary New Year. I said this New Year is not only New Year like somebody else New Year around the world, but it's also legendary. And why? In this century, the 21st century, we celebrate something related to the legend. As uh, Venerable Saint Yip John was saying earlier, Kabal uh, Mahaprabhu is Almighty God. He can do anything he wants. He plays a bet with Kabal Mahaprabhu, who is young, who embarrassed him of being well known and being a wise person. God supposed to be more wise than anybody else. And why emerge a Tom Abarakoma as a wiser than Kabal Mahaprabhu? He was so embarrassed by this fact. So if he lack of morality on him, if he just like ordinary people, he would say, so what? I lost the bet, but I'm almighty God. I will not do anything. I will not, I would forget my promise to we had myself. You cannot do anything against me because you are so weak. But in the contrary, the so-called Almighty God has something in his mind, in his conscience, which is moral concern. He is the Almighty God, he is the leader, he is strong most powerful, but he has compassion. He has committed to uh, reality, committed to his promise, Satya. If he said she had to do it, life or death, she had to fulfill his promise. That's the morality, number one. And number two, uh, number two, when he cut his head off, he realized that if my head was tossing to the air, the space would be ablaze. If I toss it to the ocean, it would be dry up. If I toss my head to the ground, it would be all destroyed. He had that compassion. He, he doesn't care only about himself, about his family, but also he cares about all beings as well. This is his loving kindness, compassion. That would be set as an example to a contemporary leader, to today's leader, young, old. So a lot of us to learn from this legend. And that's why we celebrate this. Also, let me add this to um, a lot of people ask, you claim as a, a Buddhist, you yourself as a Buddhist, and why you take a religion from the Brahmanism as a concept to celebrate the new year? Like I said, this new year is not about religion. We observe that all around the country. The new year celebrate mostly at the temple, at the temple of Pagoda. And some villages under the tree, under Dam Jiray Dampo and so on. But mostly in the temple of Pagoda. And the Buddhists go to the Buddha not with empty hand, but with uh, four requisites, including 
to to offer to the monk. To offer to the monk. But we observe that not only one is going to the temple, the cha, the Protestant, all religion faithful went to the temple, going to the temple to celebrate the new year. And as long as they go there at the temple, it's not just praying Lord Buddha traditionally, but like a our Dharma Vietnam spoke earlier. There has a building the same here with different concepts, playing game, focus, popular game, all kinds of uh, moral concepts that we can draw from Cambodian New Year. So, Cambodian New Year is not just the passage from old to new, but also the lesson that gives to uh, all participants to learn from. I would like to stop at this yeah. point. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So much. I, I will continue asking you because I would like to learn something, that, you know, the differences between, between the celebration of the Cambodian New Year in Cambodia, as well as the Cambodian uh, celebration, uh, Cambodian New Year celebration in the U.S., because uh, I think you were uh, old enough to celebrate when you were in Cambodia. So uh, I would like I will come back later to 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 um, to, uh, to 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 talk about these uh, differences between uh, the celebration in Cambodia and then and then the celebration in the U.S., whether they are the same or uh, are there any differences uh, in, in the celebration. So, but uh, now I would like to turn to uh, Venerable Dr. Yon Sing Yit on the, the perspective, the, you know, the religious perspective on, on Cambodian New Year, as, as, as uh, Mr. Umpei San has mentioned that mostly we celebrate the Cambodian New Year at the temple, you know, at uh, monasteries and, and do all kinds of rituals uh, performances in uh, at the temple. So, uh, according to the Buddha's teaching, according to the, the Buddhist teaching, what can you share with us? What can uh, the younger generation learn from from the celebration? Uh, you know, one of the things that very unique is that some even mentioned that the uh, Cambodian New New Year is it is a family is a family day because it is a chance that all the young uh, children have opportunity to go back home and pay their respect to the parents. So, uh, you know, what should we be, uh, what can we, we, we do? Uh, or what, what should we learn from this uh, auspicious oca uh, occasion uh, in, in, the, the, in Buddhist view? So could you please share with us and, and share that, that this uh, with the, the public, so thank you. In Cambodia, we do have uh, many celebrations, festivals, and ceremonies. But Khmer New Year celebration is the biggest one comparing to the others. And comparing to Siong Ben, comparing to Josa, Daniel Sa, Katen, Khmer New Year is the biggest one, and it's it going to take three days for the celebration. And I think the Khmer New Year is the, uh, the biggest gathering and the most celebrated one. Uh, not only Cambodian Buddhists, but all the people in the country celebrate it. And mostly uh, yeah, we celebrate the, based on the, as I said earlier, and this celebration is the combination of the three elements. Uh, Brahmanism, Cambodian cultures, and Buddhist culture, especially the, we can see a lot of rites and rituals which vary with the Buddhist philosophies. Uh, for example, if we uh, listen to the previous speakers in Cambodian program, there are a lot of explanation about how the celebration is uh, taken. And one thing that it impressed me very much 
comparing to the other celebration is Khmer New Year is clearly explained and very clear information of how to perform the Khmer New Year. Like the first day it is called Sunkran or Maha Sunkran and second day it is called Vret Wanabot and the third day it is called Vret Langsa or Langsa and from this uh, celebration, Cambodian people can learn one thing very, uh, can, can learn many things. Um, traditionally, religiously, um, and the national unity that people all comes together, whether they are near or far, when the new year falls on, everybody always try to come to the to, to meet their family. And uh, there are a lot of uh, activities going on, like from, from a traditional, traditional perspective and from the Buddhist perspective. For example, they, uh, goes, they go to the temple and they offer the foods and the, for requisites to the monks and they support the temple and back to in their home, at their home, they have their own celebration. They worship their parents, their elders. And uh, I see a lot of uh, forgiveness. Uh, normally on that day, people, you know, they talk, you know, when the family meet, they talk and they forgive, they excuse, they help. It is a sort of, Simply, in short, I can say that Khmer New Year is everything in one. And people feel kind of released because life has been on the rise, on the move for a year. So for three days, they feel kind of relaxation. And it seems that uh, these three days, apart from religious practice, and traditional practice, they have their own personal life too, kind of release, or they heal themselves. And the other thing is they always try to, you know, to talk to their families, especially to the elders, parents. For example, they, they wash their parents with the very utmost respect. And they say that if I have done anything wrong to you, so please forgive us. And then they, they, they clean the body, both mind and body, but they use the, like water. And this is uh, the way that they heal the people, the, the way that the silly person is. We cannot ask a question. It's, some people say, if the water can heal the people, why you, you don't, why you, why you take medicine? That is a stupid question. You know, human beings has a way of doing things. We need to wear clothes. For example, like in the Buddha Dharma, in the Buddha's teaching, Buddha uh, emphasized the most important of mind. They say, mind is the, he said, mind is the most important. Culturing mind is the most important. Then we can ask the question, why you need to shave hair, to wear a robe, and if mind is the most important. So this is, you know, when we look at the culture, we have to understand the meaning behind that. So sometimes we cannot take everything into philosophical aspects. We cannot. Because there is a steps to make people understand. So people use water to bridge uh, the, between the youngers and the older, between children and parents. Yeah. Sometimes they use flowers, especially like in Europe, they mostly they use flower. Maybe in those areas, the water is too cold, too cool. But here, our tropical climate is hot. So mostly Asian people use water to heal, to bridge between the two, the two parties. So back to your questions, we can see a lot of uh, celebration. And in that celebration also lie a lot of the Buddhist philosophy, like uh, I, I just uh, mentioned only one, uh, one performance. They wash the, 
their parents. They also clean the Buddha statue once a year. So, especially in the eastern, uh, western part of Cambodia, like Bat Bong, Pai Lin, Bati Min, Jai Yudong, Min, Jai Sim Rip, cleaning or bathing the Buddha statue is the one of the most important for the villagers. They come together and they worship the Buddha statue, they clean and they ask for blessings. And among themselves, they also feel, you know, kind of breaching the friendship. The one who had not seen each other for a year or two or three years. So they, they kind of making friendship while they, in that ceremony, in that activity. So in short, Cambodian New Year is it's not only a public New Year, but it is an individual celebration too. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, yes, of course, we, uh, we live in a world where we have dissident uh, of people who have uh, the same understanding, the level of understanding. So of course they might have some negative thoughts uh, towards some kind of celebration, but that is okay. Uh, but but uh, this is very unique. This is very uh, meaningful as a Cambodian. Uh, we live in a country where we respect our cultures and and for what you have mentioned, it's it's very uh, gracious to 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 the younger generation and as well as to the older generations. And 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 it is a day that we all gathering to pay respect one another and and to express our gratitude toward one another. So it is not only about the celebration, but it means a lot uh, as a Cambodian because it represents our value. And, and when we apply uh, the Buddha's teaching into, into practice, when we apply Buddha's teaching in our daily life, so it's it even more meaningful, just like you say, that uh, the, the, the children went, uh, go back home to watch their parents, to pay respect. So we as a Buddhist, we consider our parent as a living Buddha. So uh, this is the way of cultivating the meritorious deeds and the way of paying respect and, and once and not many times in the year that we have this opportunity. So for what you have mentioned is very uh, meaningful. And I, I hope that the younger generation uh, could understand this perspective, this uh, celebration uh, that, that we all uh, carry on from generation to, to, to the next generation. And also uh, here, because we are living in the United States of America and we build temples, we gather to, uh, to celebrate this, I would like to learn something about the differences. Uh, I don't know whether we have any differences, Mr. Wu Ping San. Uh, you live in Cambodia and you, uh, through your observation, uh, my question is really, uh, it's going to be short on, on, on this. Uh, so through your observation, are there any differences about the Cambodian New Year celebration in the US as well as in Cambodia? Can you share with us uh, a little bit in in or if if if, the, if there's not if the, if there's no any differences, uh, it, it's fine. Can you help us to understand this? You know, uh, on this uh, perspective on this uh, celebration, please. It depends on where you ask that question. If you ask the question to the Bidi Sodat, who has uh, the temple right with the one. I'm sorry. It's okay, yeah. So, yes, uh, uh, particularly uh, because you're living in Minnesota, so uh, so can... Oh, in Minnesota, Minnesota is the place that has a, a rich Cambodian culture. I mean, we have the temple, we have Hmong, we have Buddhist community as big as thousand and thousand member. So the celebration is almost the same, almost the same as in Cambodia. But it's some place like uh, the community is small, a few hundred people. The temple is uh, not wide open in the small building and so on. So they don't celebrate as uh, 
joyous as the, the one in Minnesota. But one that I should note is in Cambodia, the Jews enjoy the most. The Jews enjoy the celebration more than the one in the United States. There are two ways of thinking about that. One is good. They enjoy washing the food for their parents. They enjoy giving gifts to the parents. They, they enjoy themselves being released from the confinement at home, you know, as a Cambodian culture is concerned. The girls, most mostly, the girls are not allowed to have a close contact with the boy. But for the new year, the parent release like the, they release the bird from the cage. So how joyous! Imagine that all being being released from the confined cage. Nothing compared to that. In Cambodia. I'm talking about fam family freedom, relationship between parent and kid. We are more modernized than in Cambodia, I admit that. So things seem to go normal. Also, another thing is different, but in the bad way, here we, we respect people in many, many ways. There in Cambodia, I saw lately, uh, yesterday, I saw the video, they performed the Songkran yesterday in neighboring country. But I, I know that in my experience from my younghood, first it start from the neighboring country, like a splashing the water to the passerby, passerby. It start from the border, like a pilot, like a since upon a pipette. They sprout the scented perfume water slightly to the passerby. And then it expands as a big as a water holes. Water holes splashing to the passerby with nice dress, nice clothes but they don't enjoy that way. That's lack of respect to the people. Okay. And yesterday I saw in the neighboring country and I thought that soon it would come to our country like I saw before. They have the Hmong, thousands and thousands of Hmong celebrate some time with car, with all kinds of vehicle and boat as well. And the, the standby sprout the water with the, the big bucket whoop, whoop, whoop over the head of the monk. Is that bad or good? I say that maybe it's not bad yet, but it's going to be so bad tomorrow and the next day. Is this kind of culture spread to our community? like it spread before. Spreading, and I, I, I want to take a more example to present it to all available. Cambodian New Year in the past supposed to be so solemn, so religious, so moral, and later also in my lifetime, they play be a foul, gambling. It's it transformed little by little from, from the little thing into which thing real quick. Dancing uh, on the three night on the new year. And I spent as far as uh, I spent the new year to one or two months in Lung Ramit Kapung Tut. Thing goes wrong if we don't stop it. That's a different celebration in Cambodia and in here.
Thank, thank I don't you. mean to take the time. I think like, Cambodia is a my flesh and blood. I'm a Cambodian. Cambodian in the United States is Cambodian. Cambodian in my home country is Cambodian. I have no intention to criticize, but my experience, I did that shit, I saw it, and I predict it that way. Thank you. Also, let, let me, let me uh, share my opinion with the variable St. Yet Yon. I agree totally. Cambodian celebration, if we open for answer, gonna be thousand and thousand answer, endless. Because we cannot translate the meaning of celebration in one word. But, but still, something notable to, to discuss here, Cambodian New Year is about the passing from the old to new, but it's a celebration of some grand that is the value or practice from our ancestor until now. This is only the difference. Are there many? Endless answer. Yeah, uh, well, well, Mr. Open I think we we are running late a little bit. So I would like to sum up this uh this talk because otherwise uh we are going online for a long hours and venerable monks here uh, waiting for us. And and uh, lastly, I would like to uh, sum up this talk uh, to to both of you and to venerable young to yet. Uh, and because we still have, I just want to inform the uh, the viewers that we are still have the next day. We are because we are doing this broadcasting program for the three day celebration uh, today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. So uh, we'll, we will continue on uh, with touching on some aspects of this uh, auspicious occasion. And but lastly, I would like to uh, to, to both of you. Sorry, can you say again? I'm not told that I'm going to be tomorrow also. I'm not, I've never been told that. No, oh, no, 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 we have different, uh, different groups of, of the speakers. So, uh, so with that, 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 that's a, that is a, the, the different, uh, different versions, but we are still touching on the aspects of the Cambodian New Year. But uh, for both of you sharing with us today is part of the aspects. And also we will have two another uh, speakers to join us on this aspect. So, because we, we cannot talk the whole thing, as you know, the celebration is big and there's no words that can describe the whole celebration. Uh, so that's why I would like you to, uh, to, to sum up and lastly to share with uh, our viewers, what can you tell us the importance and, and what would you like to tell this, the viewers uh, in this celebration and how can we, how can the younger generation learn from this and what would you like them to remember and, 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 and keep this in their mind? So when about Dr. Yang Tingye, could you please share with us a uh, very short one? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to uh, update the news which is happening in Cambodia right now. I think we have the most quiet New Year celebration this year, uh, I think 1979. Very quiet, no people, <laughs> very silent. Everything is calm <laughs> since yesterday because of the rise of infection. Yeah. Yes. And uh, Cambodian New Year is celebrated uh, in different, under the four, uh, under the four kinds of celebration. One I would like to, uh, one is the, they celebrate because of traditions. Uh, they celebrate it because of it is very popular. They celebrate it because it is related to philosophy in terms of Buddhist philosophy or my philosophy or Hindu or whatever. And the other one is it, it just a practice of the country. So this is four categories of celebration are found in the Khmer New Year. So my short advice and comments to the celebration, please 
uh, use, please uh, celebrate my new year in a very uh, formal, simple, and make it make it uh, make it use make use of it for your personal practice for your family and use the Khmer New Year as a, a central figure, the central point to unite, to enjoy, and to forgive, to forget, and to help each other for the sake of our society. And I wish all venerable monks who are living overseas and all Cambodian people who are living across the globe and all the people, other people right now in the country are facing a big challenge of the rise of infectious. May all the Cambodian people and sentient beings free from the suffering. Happy Khmer New Year. Thank you. Thank, 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 thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, uh, Mr. Upeng San, I would like you to have a few words as well. What would be the message that you would like to convey to the younger generation and as well as to the general? public uh, during this uh, auspicious occasion. Could you please uh, share with us a few words on uh, this uh, occasion? Thank you. Sure, sure. Uh, I would like to say to all my fellow Cambodians anywhere around the world, keep the concept of Kabbalah Mahaprom compassion for you as well. Keep the concept of respect that all the seven Devana, and especially Devana Mundia TV, for respect their parents, keep it as your. And may you have the four Buddhist blessings for the, the new year to come and the, the many more years to come. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So once again, uh, to our viewers that we are going to talk again in English. Uh, so my, some people might be asking again that why are we talking in English? Because, you know, we would like to uh, spread this uh, meaning, uh, this celebration to the non-Cambodian speaker uh, to understand the, the essence of the celebration. That's why we are speaking English. So uh, in case that younger generation are interested in this uh, meaning. So that's why we are doing this. Uh, once again, uh, Dr. Wenwell, Dr. Yan Seng Yit, uh, my apologize. And I thank you so much for uh, for joining us today and as well as, well as Mr. Wu Peng San and all venerable monks and all the viewers who are uh, watching this. And uh, lastly, Happy New Year. And may all of you celebrate this new year with your mindfulness and celebrate it with uh, respect and loving kindness to all people around and beyond your place. So uh, for this, I would like to end and I yield back to the main program and the main speakers. So uh, thank you so much for watching with us and may all, you, may all of you be blessed uh, with the Buddha's blessing. Thank you.